Hey, is it too early to place a bet on Takuma Sato to win the Indianapolis 500 in 2023? Asking for a friend uh, because I think he suddenly may become a very real favorite to win that race. Let's talk about it. Before we get going, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. I think this is probably one of the best places on the internet to check out uh, IndyCar news, content, reviews, all the good stuff, interviews when we get the season going. Yeah, you should definitely subscribe if you haven't already. So let's uh, do a little bit of house cleaning and catch up on a few things that happened in the world of IndyCar over the last couple of weeks. Jamie Chadwick last week was confirmed to Andretti Autosport as a driver in Indy Lights. I, I mean, sorry, Indy NXT. Uh, and surprisingly, and really encouragingly, frankly, uh, with DHL as the sponsor, primary sponsor, uh, it appears like it's going to be a full season deal, which uh, is a good thing, certainly for Jamie Chadwick and, and I think certainly for Andretti Autosport. It's going to be nice to see the W Series champion get to race in a series where, you know, let's be honest, the competition level is higher and you really can't get higher in terms of a competitive team in Indy Lights than Andretti Autosport. So the tools are there uh, for Jamie Chadwick to really shine. But I do have a question about this, and that is uh, Romain Grosjean. Now, we know that DHL is going to come back with Romain Grosjean next year in IndyCar in some capacity. But uh, typically, an Indy Lights budget is anywhere between one to three million dollars per year, and an IndyCar budget at a top team can get as high as ten. So I wonder how much uh, uh, DHL was already kind of limited last year with their primary sponsorship of Romain Grosjean. So I wonder if this is cutting into DHL's IndyCar budget, or maybe it's uh, hopefully it's expanding. But I'm curious. On Alex Pillow was officially confirmed as the reserve driver for the 2023 McLaren Formula One team. Now, he'll be with the Formula One team on weekends that don't conflict with his current obligations with Chip Ganassi Racing. But I think it certainly points to what Alex Pillow and where Alex Pillow is going to be in 2023. My curiosity, again, kind of leads to... Is he going to be an IndyCar driver for McLaren? One would think that that is going to be the case, but I don't know. His pace was very good when he got in the car at Circuit of the Americas as a, a test driver. So I, I wonder, I wonder if Alex Pillow maybe has higher aspirations than just Aero McLaren SP. Effective December 9th, IndyCar will have released their current marketing director. Now, this is very, very important stuff. This is going to end up being one of the biggest hires thus far in the Penske era because the one thing, whether it's fans, whether it's industry people, whether it's drivers, has been uh, marketing. That's like the first thing I hear all the time and a lack of marketing in IndyCar. But at the end of the day, I think you need to be absolutely fair to the person who was previously in that position because... She did not have a budget. Um, I've heard numbers as low as $300,000 to $1 million per year in terms of marketing the series, an entire series. Um, now that's without the Indianapolis 500. I think the, that IMS has their own separate budget. But when you're talking about marketing 15 races on potentially less than a million dollars a year, uh, I think that's a tall ask for anybody. So I think that Yes, a marketing director, a new marketing director who has vision, a passion for the sport, all that stuff is very, very important. But I think that regardless of who you get in there, IndyCar has to treat the next hire as a reboot. And whoever gets that position is going to need to be given the tools to succeed. And I'm hoping they are, because if they're not, this person's going to have the same complaints levied against. They could be the nicest person in the world, and they're going to have the exact same complaints levied against them because they're essentially going to be a scapegoat for potentially IndyCar not wanting to increase the budget to market the series. The Bus Bros will drive the Tower Motorsports LMP2 car for the Rolex 24. Yes, that's right. Team Penske drivers Joseph Newgarden and Scotty McLaughlin uh, we'll pair along with uh, NXT driver Kiffin Simpson, which is interesting because he's uh, on the Ganassi side of things. So Penske and Ganassi teaming up in a team that's completely unrelated. Uh, well, not completely unrelated. As far as I am aware, 
Uh, the reason Newgarden and McLaughlin got this call is because there's a distinct possibility if the GTP cars are unreliable at the Rolex, that an LMP2 car is going to win it overall. So if you're Team Penske, you at least want one of your drivers to win. So the bus bros in the LMP2 car, we're going to hand them the trophy right away? Maybe. The American Legion announced a primary sponsorship uh, for the number 10 Ganassi car today. Uh, they, of course, are replacing the departing NTT for that particular entry. Uh, that's good. They're also going to be the primary sponsor on Kiffin Simpson's Indy Lights car. So there's two Indy Lights cars. Or sorry, I, 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 that wasn't actually a joke that time. Uh, there are two Indy NXT cars that are going to have uh, strong sponsorship ties to IndyCar, which I think is good. Um, we knew this was coming, um, especially because of NTT leaving. Um, but this has kind of been the story with Ganassi, and, and it's going to continue throughout this video, is having to reallocate funds that were previously assigned to other cars. So when we're talking about American Legion, like American Legion was spread across three cars last year. They were spread across the 10, the 48, and the one car at the Indianapolis 500. Well, now that budget all has to go into the 10 car. So when we're talking about fourth and fifth entries, you're going to have to come up with budget. And that budget is going to be the reason why we're going to be talking about the 11 car. Um, now, you guys knew that the fourth car was going to be the 11 car because I talked about it uh, probably a month and a half ago at this point. Um, they were looking for a driver with a full season budget. That's why they looked so hard and even presented contracts to guys like Nicholas Latifi. But no one was able to cough up the eight to ten million dollars uh, for a full season that Chip Ganassi wants. So what they have done is they have signed Formula Two driver Marcus Armstrong, who will drive the road and street courses for Chip Ganassi Racing. Um, now Armstrong, highly touted, really coming out of Europe. I think he's going to be pretty good, um, but we're going to have to wait till preseason testing to really find out how good he is. A lot of people. Uh, were prompted to ask, because it was a road and street announcement, what about the ovals? Well, logic would dictate that you would think it would be Jimmy the Juggernaut Johnson. No. As far as I understand it, Jimmy Johnson is not going to be the oval driver for the 11 car in 2023. Now, does that mean that Jimmy Johnson is not going to be driving a Chip Ganassi car at the Indianapolis 500? No, I don't believe it needs that. I think there's a very real possibility that Jimmy could come up with a budget for a one-off effort at the Indianapolis 500. I would not be surprised if there's a sponsor at Petty GMS right now, which of course Jimmy Johnson now is a part owner of, that would be interested in leveraging a sponsorship of a double attempt with Jimmy Johnson behind the wheel. I would not be surprised, and I would put my money on it right now if I could, that Jimmy Johnson will be driving a number 43 car for Chip Ganassi Racing at uh, the Indianapolis 500 next year. But that would just be a bet. That would not be based on any kind of inside information I have. I just think that that logically, reasonably makes sense. So who is driving the oval tracks in the 11 car? Enter one Takuma Sato. Yes. So I heard about this a couple of days ago, um, and I've confirmed it uh, with a couple of people uh, who I trust quite a bit. Now, nothing is signed yet, so I need to have that kind of caveat there. But as far as I'm aware, there's not really... there's We're not expecting that it's going to be anybody but Takuma Sato on the ovals in the 11 car. And this is all very, very interesting because when you think about um, oil and water, I would say Takuma Sato and Chip Ganassi Racing are as close to that as you could get. Particularly when you think about the team leader, Scott Dixon. As far as I know, and uh, you know, I, I profess to know a lot about IndyCar racing. As far as I know, I don't think necessarily Scott Dixon's the biggest fan of Takuma Sato. I think that has been obvious over the, the last couple of times that they have crashed together, particularly on ovals, by the way. So certainly when I heard this the first couple of times, I was just kind of like, does that make sense? And then I really thought about it and I started to say, okay, I think it does make sense. We know that Takuma Sato has a, personal, a lot of personal sponsorship. You see it all over his hat. You've already seen his hat in this video. Um, but more importantly, Honda loves Takuma Sato, obviously. 
Um, it's not just the hometown uh, aspect of it, but of course, that's a big part of it. It's also the hometown aspect and the fact that Takuma Sato can win the biggest races in IndyCar, particularly the Indianapolis 500, where he has two wins. With that comes a free engine lease. Any team that gets Takuma Sato typically gets a free engine lease. So when you're Chip Ganassi and you've got, let's say, 75% of the budget covered with Marcus Armstrong coming in, but you need that extra 25% for the oval races. Takuma Sato brings that and a free engine lease. And, oh, by the way, he's an Indy 500 winner. That's good for your current sponsors. That's good for PR. And that's good for speed when you're trying to win the biggest race on the planet. And you had to replace Tony Kanaan with somebody, right? Because that's that's the other thing to, to consider here, is that Tony Kanaan's driving for Aero McLaren now. So you needed someone to come into that team and pull their weight. Because I think Chip wants to go right back out and do exactly what he did at the Indianapolis 500 last year. Take that amazing setup, the Honda engine that clearly has a little bit more poke, especially at the end of the race, than the other engine. And... How do you do that? Well, a two-time Indianapolis 500 winner is probably a good way to do that. We also know, and this works out for Honda in a lot of different ways, uh, it's come to light recently, I believe Marshall Pruitt was the first one to report this, that Takuma Sato um, was looking at an oval-only program. And at the time, it was with Dale Coyne racing. Well, the the rub there was that Dale Coyne, uh, how were they going to do a third car part-time? Uh, especially how was Honda going to allow them to run three different engines? Uh, Dale himself didn't really seem particularly interested in that, as far as I know. Um, really, the only person who was interested in that was one Henry Malukas. So, and I don't even think that was necessarily for Tukuma Sato, because Sato was with the Rick Ware side of things, and so that was a bit of a clash anyway. It works out for Honda, because they don't have to supply a third engine to coin. That team will be two. Um, they are able to get their favorite son in a very, very good car, a car absolutely capable of getting him to his third Indianapolis 500 win. It works out for Ganassi because it shores up his fourth car. It means he doesn't have to cut a car. It means he's got a strong car at the Indianapolis 500 and a strong driver. Um, does it totally work out from Chip Gan- Is it exactly what Chip Ganassi Racing wanted? Probably not. But I think in terms of a compromise, in terms of, you know, the best available option, given that you didn't have someone who could get into that car and fill the budget for the entire year, Takuma Sato makes a hell of a lot of sense. So really, it's a win for virtually everybody. And so the question now that we kind of have Ganassi at least full-time sorted is what's going to happen with Dale Coyne racing? Because it's a head-scratcher, and it's a head-scratcher for most people, it's kind of like the old, uh, as far as I know, this is kind of the old, the way Dale Coyne has always kind of done it, is, uh, you know, it's it's almost like that team's more cloak and dagger than, than Penske. I've heard some names floated around. Um, Tatiana Calderon is one. Dalton Kellett is another one. Uh, Yuri Vips from Formula 2 is another name that's been floating around a little bit. The most interesting thing that I've heard recently and you've seen some photos on social media of R.C. Innerson showing off the former Top Gun racing chassis, which the Innersons owned, the Innersons now possess. It sounds like Dale Coyne is interested in bringing both R.C. Innerson and those chassis into the coin shop. So maybe R.C. Innerson could be kind of a dark horse, second full-time driver at Dale Coyne Racing. We're going to have to wait and see on that one. Um, I think there's a lot of things up in the air. The good news with Dale Coyne Racing is that they require less budget than, say, a Chip Ganassi. When you're starting to talk about $8, $10 million, uh, Dale Coyne's about half of that, maybe. There's some other drivers that have partial budgets. I think Stingray Rob is someone who's going to play into some of these final seats at some point because he's probably about mm, 75% of the way there, if not further along, um, in terms of a, a full season IndyCar budget, particularly at some of the teams that aren't commanding such high prices to buy your way in. So it's going to be an interesting off season still to go. I think, you know, I, I'm surprised that we're still talking about stuff like this now. It seemed like the off season started so early and it was so crazy early on that I was like, what are we going to talk about in December? Well, we're talking about this. So 
Um, now we just, I guess, await the official announcement uh, as soon as all the ink dries on the paper whenever they get it signed. But again, uh, I, I'm fully expecting at this point Takuma Sato is going to drive the oval tracks for Chip Ganassi Racing in the 11 car. So what do you think of that? What do you think about Dale Coyne Racing? Where do you think they're going to end up once all the music stops? Who's going to be in those two chairs? Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Lane on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I will see you in the next video.